I just learned about a genre of content I never knew existed, and now I've become a huge fan of it. It's door-to-door -door salesmen posting their most embarrassing moments, just proudly posting their own L's, as if it's like a report card to be proud of that's pinned on the refrigerator. It doesn't make any sense. So there's a few TikTok creators I was scrolling through today who claim to be a highly successful door-to-door -door salesman, but if you watch their videos, almost every single one of them is them making the people they're trying to close on angry, getting kicked off their property, and just generally never succeeding. And yet somehow that's supposed to serve as an advertisement for this product that they're selling to their audience, which is a guide on how to be a successful door-to-door -door salesman. It just doesn't compute in my little noodle up here. You're selling a course on how to be successful as a door-to-door -door salesman, yet every video you post is your failures. <laughs> it doesn't add up. Like this, this equation, the mathematics, it's too advanced for me, I guess. Today we're going to focus on one test subject here, a very interesting specimen named Oliver. How to make $250 tomorrow in three steps. One, go to Home Depot, buy a squeegee and a brush. Two, go knock doors and ask them if they want a price on window cleaning. Hey boss, how are you? Good. Have you seen us? No. Good looking guys, gray shirts. Yes. Okay. I don't know if you know Miss Palmer. I'm gonna take one step, I'll just show you and then I gotta run. We're you just helping, anything? we're not selling anything. Don't treat me like a dog, sir, I'm not. I'm just okay, a hard one right now, okay? I'm really busy. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. Now, when I initially saw this, I thought it had to be satire, like this guy's just taking the piss on door-to-door -door salesmen. But he's not. Oliver, his whole career, is being a door-to-door -door salesman and trying to bestow upon us plebeians his sage wisdom when it comes to this craft that he's clearly mastered here. So if you read the description, the caption on the video, it says, you know, how you can turn it into thousands of dollars. And then when he's going through, like, the beginning where he's saying, you know, two, and then he holds up three. Like, it's clearly supposed to be a joke, but he really does this. This is his job. And he just proudly showcases these horrifyingly shameful moments here. There's very few people in the world that like door-to-door -door salesmen. That's up there with, like, telemarketing scams. Like, people don't like to just be accosted on their front porch by people that don't really take no for an answer. So, Oliver embodies that entire <laughs> belief system and tries to teach others as well. Now, he does sprinkle in a couple of successful deals on his page, but it's hidden, like, like pickles on a burger, in between all of the failures that he showcases, it's it's baffling. And sometimes the descriptions are just way off. So it'll be like, here's how you make $300 in five seconds. And then he doesn't make $300, it's not five seconds, and you're left with your dick in your hand wondering where it all went wrong and why Oliver lied to you. It's just really confusing because from everything I see here, he's not that great at door-to-door -door selling anything. So buying a, a, a course from him would be like, buying a guide on how to get laid from an incel and like the footage they use to promote the you know getting pussy book is footage of the writer the author going up to women and them saying ew no it's like really weird to try and advertise your door-to-door sell -door sell salesman course with the footage that he showcases Hey boss, how are you? Have you seen us? What do you mean? The good looking dudes with blue shirts? No. <laughs> you missed us. Show you super quick. We're given a bit of a discount for dudes with glasses. So Oliver has a script that he never really deviates from. He is actually a video game NPC with only a few dialogue options. He always starts with, hey boss, if it's a man. And then he always says, we're doing a bit of a discount for something that the person is wearing or something appearance wise. Like sometimes, you know, women with short hair, women with curly hair. And they're like, ha ha. Thanks. And then he goes into his hard sales pitch here. You qualify. <laughs> Give you a quick price. Oh. Yeah, that would be good. I love the setup back there. It's usually 309. Comes down to 209. We have a plan to paint. Well, we okay. want to wash everything at the same time. If you have a phone number or something that they can call later. It's a job worth doing in a couple months. If things are worth doing in three months, they're worth doing today. We don't want to do that today. If I can have your phone number. Sure. Why? If you call us back though, it's going to be 309. Yeah, I see that. If we could give you an awesome job, could we call it 149, give you a bit of a discount? If it's worth doing, then it's worth doing today. I don't want to do that today. He tries to really put the nipple clamps on him here. He wants to close this today, and he is not budging on it. So the, the guy is being very respectful. He's like, hey, you know, maybe we just schedule this for another day, really not feeling it for this afternoon. But Oliver, he's on the hunt right now. So he just keeps dropping the price lower and lower, hoping that he can get at least like a hundred something dollars out of this exchange. 
because he knows he's not getting a call back later from this or anything like that. So it's just desperately trying to keep making a sale here on this guy who's just trying to be nice and indulge in the pitch. But eventually, doesn't work out. They go their separate ways. Oliver does sometimes get pretty aggressive, though. He follows the same script, of course, but sometimes he seems to get hurt because I think he has a pretty high level of entitlement. Kind of the route coordinator no, no, on... Just tell me what you're no, no, doing. Oh, showing's easier oh, than no, telling. No, no, no. No, no. Come on. Come on, where? We're doing real good. We've got the nicest I know. in the street. I'd rate it A+. No, no, no. Sorry, we're just guys. doing... We're, we're really happy with what we've got. What do you got? Go away. Go on. Go on. This you is my property. I want you off it. I haven't even told you what we're doing. I'm not interested. I don't do things at the door. Cool. Okay. People always say no to things they don't understand. Oh, don't, don't. Have a great day. It's always, have there's always day, one guys. guy. I'm happy to check off you the stubborn guy for day. the day. Have a good one. Insufferable. The elderly gentleman here isn't the bad guy. Nobody likes door-to-door -door salesmen. Like, plain and simple. There are very few people that enjoy that. And the ones that allow you to go through the the whole kit and caboodle song and dance of what you're selling are the ones that are just too afraid to just say no to your face and close the door because that's not an easy thing to do for most people. That that takes a lot. And most people, it becomes kind of like a high-stress situation trying to figure a way out of it, but no one's usually interested. So this old man just being blunt about it isn't necessarily a bad thing. Another thing I notice a lot with door-to-door -door salesmen is they really like elderly people because they're much easier to manipulate into giving them money for a usually subpar service and something they legitimately don't need in any capacity. So this guy was just not having it. He's saying, no thank you. But Oliver keeps pushing. He's like, oh, you don't even know what I'm doing here yet. Oh, people always say no to things they don't understand. Just being a fucking insufferable asshole. Like, condescendingly talking to this guy as if he's an idiot for not doing this. And it's just trash. Like, I think that's just awful. So then that clearly gets him even more riled up. And then Oliver's like, hey, I'm checking the stubborn guy off the list. Like, what? what is this? Elementary school? Hey, Junior, listen. No gold star for you. You're a, you're a bad egg. Not a good noodle. You know, it's like, what the fuck, man? Like, he, th you went up to him, he did not want it, you should have left when he said no, but that's not how you operate. When you hear no, you just keep pushing. It's all just super slimy, and of course nothing about him is genuine. He has set lines that he says to each person that he encounters, because he doesn't even really view them as people. They're just potential money bags that he can grab a few bucks out of. It's just there's nothing good about what he does. And I also don't really trust his claim about being this guru salesman. And he claims that he's made over 9,000 sales. But I truly think that's just a meme. Based on everything I've seen here, I, I just I don't put a lot of faith in that claim at all. And then he even tries to post testimonials, at least in one of the videos I saw, where it was just like two Discord messages from two completely random people that are claiming that they're making, you know... A couple thousand dollars a day thanks to everything that Oliver's teaching them and I feel like there's no fucking way. And we're giving a bit of a discount for people that are sitting on steps. <laughs> which is coincidence actually. Go around, count it up, just give you a quick price. It's okay, we, we do it every other year and we have some we usually use and this isn't our years. Is he as good looking as me? It's such a cringy routine too. He always mentions himself being a good looking guy almost every single time too. Is It feels like a lot of insecurity here that's brewing up and that he's trying to mask with this, I guess, bravado, perhaps? I I don't know. It's just so off-putting. So pretty much every time he knocks on a door or approaches homeowners at their property, he mentions like, hey, have you seen us? Like me, good-looking guys in this shirt? Well, here's our discount for, you know, ladies sitting on steps. Ha ha ha. I don't know, it's, it's fucking awful. This did not lead to a sale, by the way. I'll spoil it for you. They, they were not interested, surprisingly. Thing I call it 125? Sorry, I don't think it's in the budget right now. 125? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Thank you, though. <laughs> the caption on this one literally says how to close deals, and he gets a drive-by rejection. So he's talking to her at the door, wasn't working out. She then comes back around and says, nope, still a no, sorry, basically. And yet he still says how to close deals, even though, like, if you watch the video, he doesn't close the deal. He gets the door closed in his face, fundamentally. Like, she didn't, like, slam the door in his face or anything, but it was a no. I think that's probably enough clips here. I, I just find this to be so fascinating to 
hype yourself up as a guru of a craft, but then all of the evidence you present of yourself being that guru contradicts it because it's mainly failures or just being misleading. Now, like I said, he does have a couple of successful closing deals here that he posts videos on, but I wouldn't even say it's the majority of it. I'd say it's like pretty even between failures and the deals he closes. And keep in mind, these are only the ones he films. I feel like he's filmed every single successful deal he's ever had and has only posted like half of his failures. So it's probably like a ratio of 500 failures to one person who just finally gives in after being pestered enough and says yes reluctantly to him. So it's not exactly the best ratio. Uh, I'm just spitballing numbers here, but that's kind of the impression I get. I just wanted to talk about it because I didn't even know this little genre of content existed. So I found it interesting. That's about it. See ya.